Hello, everybody, and welcome to another edition of Magic Mike's, proudly sponsored by CoolSomething.com, Mana Traders, as well as Twitch subs and Patreon supporters just like you. My name is Evan Irwin. I'm get started each week by saying hello to my two co-hosts, Power Dragon. What's up, everybody? Hope you're not out there getting stuck with too many cactus, because, man, Thunder ja Junction has been a bit of a doozy so far. This set is crazy. It's a lot. Ruben Bressler. Getting stuck with the cactus. I like that. That's very good. Getting, getting stuck on the cactus people and stuff. Pretty neat. Now, if you missed our pre-show, patrons and subs of this channel get access to all that stuff early. We kick it off with our first pick and our code push. Visit CoolStuffInc.com. Use that promo code MAGICMIKES. It's on the screen right now. Use promo code to get 5% off anything in the store. Single seal supplies, whatever you want. Use 5% off. Uh, get 5% off by using the code MAGICMIKES. You support us. You let us exist. The more you support us with that promo code, the longer that we'll be sticking around with our silly antics. And we That's do right. appreciate it. And Man, uh, now's a good time to save money because, dude, Thunder Junction has a lot of cards that are worth something. So use that so, discount. So good. <laughs> and, you know, the stuff is in stock and we had to restock. That's how good this set is. We had to restock a standard set. We haven't had to do that in like half a year or something, if not longer. Interesting. It's been a long time. Pre-release was up 20% over MKM. Yeah, Thunder what Junction is nuts for a lot of different retailers. Like this, this set is good. It's been very real. Now, uh, and we're going to support your favorite streamer with your suggestions in the show to see who we raid tonight on Twitch. And that's thanks to our sponsor, CoolStuffInc.com, where you can find cool stuff in stock every day using the promo code MAGICMIKES. Now, uh, our first pick comes from a corporate move. Those are the funnest parts to cover. It's the corporate uh, move. Yeah. Me. Because you know we get so much information about why they're happening and, and, and all that good stuff. Um <coughs> Because when you're a big boy company that's on the stock market and you're trying to have people leave the company who are in very large, you know, important positions, you have to tell them, like, officially, hey, government, this is happening. So the Securities and Exchange Commission got a uh, Form 8K, which we all know Form 8K, am I right? And Form 8K is saying, like, hey, the president, uh, which is uh, Cynthia Williams, is going to step down effective next week. Now, this is a person who's been president of the company for, I think, a couple years now. Mm -hmm. uh, a couple of arguably arduous at many times years, uh, yeah. controversial in some you know decisions. Did they come directly from her? Did they come from Hasbro down from C-Suite? We don't know. But we also know that 15% of the workforce was cut at the end of last year. And that was a huge dagger to a lot of people working there. And who knows what that's done to morale and things. And another thing that's kind of been mentioned many times, which is Cynthia herself didn't really care much for magic. And there's a few instances of that I'm not just sort of making that up, but at the same time, I don't know the woman I can't speak for, but I know from what people who have said, there's many times where she's like, you know, you actually play that game or whatever, and didn't really give it as much, I don't know, I guess credence as it needed to be. And when I kind of hear that, and I heard that over and over, and then you would hear things like Mark Rosewater would say stuff like, you know, there's people in the building who don't care about magic, right? There's people in the building who don't have that emotional, you know, connection thing to magic. And he's like, and that's a good thing. And I'm like, mm -hmm. I'm like you know, looking back, I have a feeling it might have talked about Cynthia a few times. Um, and not just her, but there's other people as well, um, particularly the people who deal with the money, and maybe the president is dealing with the money. Um, but there's also some convert, there's some decisions over the past few years, uh, per, for example, um, involving Amazon and having, I think, a more involved direct Amazon channel. Uh, I think there's a question of how much they made, how many print runs they made. I think there's a question of how Magic 30 kind of came and went, and that was a whole thing. I think they're going to look back at Secret Layer, which is kind of doing this weird kind of floundering thing where I think they probably went too far, didn't make enough money, and they're kind of pulling back, almost pulling back too much. Um, but yeah, this is one of those things where it's going to be hard to get like exact, you know, reasons and hows and whys because no one wants to talk and, and mess up their current job. But, you know, when someone leaves of this magnitude, it makes the news. Yeah, I think it's a tough thing because you also have the other side of that. Of She basically presided over the two most ridiculous profit years as well. Right. When you talk about making whatever, 1.1 billion, 1.5 billion or whatever, like back to back years which is kind of insane. So the other part I would throw in there too is seeing as how the announcement was made kind of the way it was. Mm -hmm. And it was followed up with their, I guess, looking for the successor. That says to me that it was sudden. Mm -hmm. You know, it was probably, and who knows, it could literally be a life issue. It could be 
her getting another opportunity somewhere else right. because once you're at that level and you're making that money in hell, you've turned a company into a billion dollar company over a couple of years and like, a lot of you know, it's probably going to be, yeah, it's going to be easy to walk into the next opportunity. So right. would not be surprised if this is more a personal thing, even than a business thing on some levels or who knows, I mean, we may find out she got sick and easily the job. Maybe she just got a bunch of money and figures it's retirement time, or maybe she just walked into a job and it just wasn't ultimately what she wanted it to be after two years. You know, she did come from Microsoft, you know, very tech background or whatever. And right. Maybe this just, you know, tabletop space, nerd space is not really where she wants to be. Like, who knows? I mean, remember the D and D license thing, you know, Ruben, that happened right in the middle of her, of her tenure. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it's tough to attribute any cause like we're this is all going to be post hoc or propter hoc. Yeah, right? everything's speculation. Everything's, everything's speculation. we have no facts. We're just going to be talking out of our asses. The podcast, like, if we, if if we try we to exactly. So like we don't have any factual information here. However, it is worth noting that in the last year and a half, uh, the uh, quarterly reports have been less than stellar. Hmm. Like that is worth noting. Sure. Uh, I think that that might have something to do with it because money fixes, you know, winning fixes everything. Right. And if you're not winning, it's not as it's not as fun anymore. Right. Once you start hitting that wall, then maybe she was like, you know what? I'm not winning quite as much as I'd like. I'm also not loving the material I'm working with quite as much as the people I'm working with. And I'm a tech person and tech people are sharks. You got to keep moving or you'll die. It's time for me to move on to my next project. It's time for me to do what's next. And I think that, you know, there's no malice. There's no, I'm not going to attribute any nefariousness here. I don't think that there's also, I don't think that it had anything probably to do with performance. Um, oh, no, she, we know that because she also got a six and a half million dollar bonus last year, you know, right. despite people being laid off because she made a million and a half or a billion and a half dollars or whatever. Right. So, you know, I, I think that we're, you know, we're probably not going to get any more information on this, and I don't need any. I think that, and she's got, you know, she's got six and a half million dollar, six and a half million reasons to not, you know, go out and try to make any kind of. Well, grand and savings. she's also probably and, had six and seven figure jobs for a while. Right, now. right, right. So they're doing, they're going to do. They'll be. Fine. I, I will yeah. say this from a different perspective, though. If you are somebody that's higher up in those types of positions, and you know you just had a banner year for the reasons that you did, right? You had the partnership with the Baldur's Gate 3 stuff. You had the Lord of the Rings stuff, which was an all-time ridiculous sales number. Biggest set of all time, yep. You know you're not going to hit that this year. Yeah. Right? You might still have a great year. It might be right. $1.2 billion instead of $1.5 billion or whatever it was. Right. But you know it's going to be a down year. Not to anybody's fault. It's right. still going to be a great year. It's just not going to be a record year. You could just be leaving while you're on top. Right? Yeah. You're searching for an opportunity. Another job says, hey, I mean, might. we'd like to have you. If, and you're like, great. I know I'm not going to hit those numbers again. I've done as good as I can do. I'm going to get out of here while my reputation's good. I mean, you have to have to remember, what's our timing, right? It's April. They're going to report on the first quarter of the year. The first quarter did not go well. Uh, Ravnica, you're, you know, remastered or whatever. Uh, no. Yeah. Not good. And Murders at Karlov Manor, no. Not good. Yeah. So I, I expect a pretty sobering you know report whatever kind of language you like to use around those things yep. but either way i don't expect like a banner core or they it, there was no phyrexia you know all will be one oh. type of stuff i don't think they have to worry about it q2 is going to be stupid this year q2 is going to yeah. be good q2 yeah. is great, right? <laughs> uh, i mean outlaws is killing it modern horizons 3 is going to absolutely crush it yep modern yeah. horizons 3 and blueboro yeah well that's going to be quarter three right so like right and Modern Horizons 3 technically releases in June. So sort I, of, but they make of. their sales numbers in Q2 because of pre-orders and or right, distributor numbers and wow. stuff yep. and things. Interesting. And it, like it has to, the product physically has to be in their like you know, yep. the distributors' doors like but before the end of the uh, uh, for the end of the quarter. But whatever. Either way, um, I just think again this this timing to me is also the. It sounds to me like Power Dragon, like you know, like they killed it. They were killing it. They killed it, killed it, killed it, killed it. If you leave right there, you say, look, you know, yeah, the, the company had problems, but I was gone at that point. You know what I mean? Yep. Like you got plausible, you know, get it, get out of here. And it gives the new person an excuse too, right? Like, well, you know, they had just gotten here. They were having to learn the company and whatever. So like right. they get a free pass on the down, the down year. I'm using that in quotes because 
still going to probably be a dumb year dollars wise at the end of all of it. I mean, again, well, Modern Horizons 3 looks great. Uh, Outlaws is killing it. Bloomborough will absolutely destroy if they do it right. I'm, I'm just fingers are crossed so hard on that. Mm-hmm. Um, and who knows? Maybe the 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 Duskboro thing or the is that what it is? Dustmorn. Dus, Dustmorn. Dustmorn. Yeah, Dustmorn thing might work out. We were talking about it in the pre-show where you know it might be Ghostbusters the set versus Friday the Thirteenth or you know Freddy right. the set. It might just be that because we had Harry, we had Harry Potter the set, but you couldn't call it that. Right. You can have Ghostbusters the set, but you can't call it that. So. I think if you just go on in on it, like you do Thunder Junction, just put all the monsters, all the tricks. Yeah, if there's some fine. people that just ghost hunt in there alongside there being some machetes and hockey masks, then there cool. better be a hockey mask equipment. That's <laughs> all I'm sure. saying. I'm for it. For real. If that's necessary. But uh yeah, so uh overall, you know, it's it's tough to say that, you know, the Cynthia didn't kind of do a great job in terms of, you know. Getting, getting them dollars for the shareholders, but at the same time, the stock has also kind of been falling over and over again, almost yeah. regardless of how insane Wizards has been doing. Yeah, yeah I mean, that's, this that's is... a bigger Hasbro scope issue, right? right. Because as, as we learned, uh, Magic, D&D, and apparently Monopoly Go are kicking everybody's ass. Monopoly so, Go like, yeah. dude, Monopoly Go did $2 billion in a year. Like, that's wild. Hell? Like, yeah. That's crazy. <laughs> And, you know, they found the right knobs to turn there. And you know, the other bit is that, like, you know, this type of position, the, I just can't imagine the pressure, quite frankly, the pressure that you're under to so many different people and groups and beholden to so many different standards and expectations. Yep. It's a lot. You know, even within each company, not even just the pressure, but just the structure or what's expected of you. You know, how are meetings set up? How many different reports do you have to put together on a regular basis, blah, blah, right. like that can be different for people from one spot to the next and may not be what you want either. Mm-hmm. Like there could be so many reasons that she's leaving the job. You know, I think it's easy for everybody to just jump to a super negative reason, but just like, man, for all we know, her significant other could be getting a ridiculous ass job on the other side of the country or something. And she's like, well, we're going to be moving. Cause he's going to be taking a, who knows, like $5 million a year job or something. Like I'm out, you know, like okay. whatever. Yeah. Who knows? Yeah, and you know, so I noted like you know, Monopoly Go. They didn't like it. It's uh, it's very sort of it's incredibly gotcha. It's one of those games that can play itself if you just let it kind of go, um, go get it. Uh, but yeah, so just you know, again, but success is success, whether you like it or yep. not. I think I I don't play Candy Crush, but millions and millions of people right. still do yep. every I, single I, day. I believe when I last looked at their numbers last year for Candy Crush, they had cumulatively done over five billion dollars. Yeah, this is where wow, you know. Yeah, it's you think of it as sort of like restaurants, you know what I mean? Like there's steakhouses where you can get really nice meals, but McDonald's sells millions of you know big bags yep. every day. Not the right. greatest food in the world, but lots of people like it. So and I, quick, I would it's quick and consistent, no matter where you go. And, and I will selling. usually have more Big Macs in a given year than I will any given uh, fancy restaurant. Yep, it's true. It's probably I don't know Big Mac. I would say quarter pounders, but yeah, that's probably true. Uh, <laughs> I mean, yeah, it's it's a whole thing. Uh, as we move out of here, the first pick to gather the townsfolk, thanks to our sponsor, Mana Traders, the best tool to enhance your magic online experience. Use the code MagicMikes underscore eight n four eight negative four for ten percent off your next subscription with Mana Traders. Tell them we sent you. We appreciate it. We move on here to gather the townsfolk, talking about stuff in the community, and just wanted to just kind of uh, lay out some OTJ impressions we've had. I've had two days with a set. I didn't get to play it in paper because I had my kids this past weekend or I would have. Uh, but, you know, I've been able to have sort of two days of, you know, at lunch after after work, staying up late, trying to sort of jam in as many as I can. Um, I'm having way more fun with this than I was, I think, MKM. Mm-hmm. Uh, if nothing, because MKM is a lot of morphs with Ward. And everything sure. about the set was how it interacted with Boris of Ward and everything wasn't, you know, was uncountable because they had to get through the Ward thing and it made your removal spells kind of crappy because now they're that much more expensive. And that it like, when you look at like how that was, that sheen was just over the whole set the whole time. When you go to a new, you know, setup like OTJ and that's not there, it doesn't make you feel like your removal spells now are super expensive or like, well, I can't, I don't want to take that one because I know we'll be able to play two spells in one turn or whatever. Um, right. And there's a lot of cool mechanics. I think plot is really interesting. 
um, and having a lot of fun with that. Uh, I think the amount of mana that you're able to use, again, the two color versus three color splashes, or maybe the four or the five color brews, the deserts are all great. Picking the deserts have gotten higher and higher in my pick list because mm -hmm. if they're just one half of your colors, they're a free crime. And yeah. free crimes, as at least I've started to find out, is super duper good. All the cool crime triggers that you just like, I played a land and I get all these things that fired off. That's fantastic. So uh, the how good crimes are, uh, how interesting the different uh, you know color pairs are and what they do, uh, how the mechanics work in and over around them. Uh, I've been having a really great time on the set. Same. You know, one of the things that was interesting, there's a guy on Twitter that I just came across recently that goes by Circovich. He's, uh, yeah. I guess he has something to do with 17 lands. He's the data analyst guy. Yeah. He posted up some early data from color combinations that people are playing. Hmm. And as it turns out, is it still sucks? Yeah. <laughs> like, <laughs> by a significant margin. Yes, it actually. does. It's so I hard. believe... He Awkward. had by even with you know margins for error whatever included, is it is around like fifty percent where the next lowest is like fifty four percent, wild all the way up to being like fifty nine or sixty percent like there it's it's not even close like as far as two color combinations go is it still really really bad I Darn. mean it's been bad for feels like I, two and a half three years now yeah it's it's gonna still be bad y'all. The is it is it spells, whether it's is it play two spells like the one they have now, is it play as many as you can to get benefits or whatever in sort of almost a storm like fashion? Yeah, draw cards, yeah. whatever. You yeah. know, they've tried so hard. I wish they would do something else with blue red. Blue red is always just play a bunch of spells. Blah, 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 blah. And it always kind of sucks. I draft the blue red deck. I've already drafted one, and I thought I had a really good one. I had really good spells, some good removal, a bunch of the un uncommon payoffs. You just get smashed by like that stupid giant cactus spider guy mm -hmm. and a six five monster. You don't do anything about that. We little two two flyers. Like what the yeah, hell? Or man? a seven seven armadillo. Well, or a Gissa that's making free zombies. It is or, funny that you like, say <laughs> those two cards first because green white appears to be by far the best archetype. It's pretty. Uh, but blue does appear to be doing extremely well. That leaves red and black kind of out in the cold a little bit. So uh, I've been particularly impressed with plot, actually, as a mechanic. When I saw that it was a mechanic, I was like, man, this is not going to work. Like, this just does, you, you just lose too much tempo. I've played too many limited environments where my opponent goes two drop, I don't have a two drop, and then they go a three drop, and then I'm dead. And I'm just short. doesn't matter what the cards are. We're so far behind. <laughs> right. But with plot, you're able to catch yourself up a little bit. Like mm -hmm. each of the plot cards and each of the plot interactions actually let you uh, sort of play a little bit of catch up. So, you know, and, and it, it's really interesting um, to see that play out because it's not immediately obvious from reading the cards that a lot of the plot cards are really good at playing defense and uh, and recovering um, just by virtue of their stat lines and how they interact with the other cards in the set. So and then, of course, saddle turns out to be better than I anticipated. I thought that it was just some sort of staple on text, but very there's a bunch of there's a bunch of pretty good staple uh, uh, um, saddle cards mm -hmm. and uh, and outlaws. Unfortunately, I feel like are a little underwhelming for me thus far. Um, I haven't had a great amount of success with anything that makes a 1-1 one, one mercenary unless I want the other effect. So that that's my initial impression. Uh, also, splashing is incredibly easy. I, I, have not, I don't think I've played a two-color deck yet um, because there's 10 common dual lands that all trigger crimes. Mm -hmm. There's a painted bluffs that lets you surveil. So that's like a third of a card, sort of. Uh, there's a come, there's a, another common desert that lets you fix your mana. Right. And then there's some other mana fixers in the format. There's a two drop one, one that taps for any color. There's a bunch of ways to make your mana work. So you're really able to play three, four, five colors kind of with impunity in this set. It's, um, it's been interesting. And you have the archway, the, the Karoo which is mm -hmm. also very strong, very good. Um, I will say that my best decks have been white-blue or white-green so far. Yep. 
And my worst decks have been blue red and black red. Yeah. And I've tried desperately on both of those, really blue red, because it it sounds cool. You know what I mean? Like, oh, okay, I can plot this and I can do this and get this, you know, second spell trigger, do that and this, and on their turn, I'll do a crime and yada yada. And it's just it's not there. I don't know what they need, but we've been up that flagpole so many times with blue red spells something. And it's like Dude, it doesn't matter if you're talking about limited or constructed. Yeah, it's it just like matter. blue red's just not been there for a while. I mean, there is the blue red deck in like uh, uh well the blue red spells the, hasn't been there in a while. Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Blue red artifacts is usually fine. Yeah, but even then the, the deck in Pioneer where you're talking about like uh, the one Arc Light the, the, Phoenix or whatever, like no, the even uh, those cards are from the, what four years ago, right? The the Strict Save one, like the O three that gives plus three plus throw when you play uh, instant sorcery. Uh, you play the one Guilty. three that that yeah. re replays stuff from the graveyard. Yeah, uh, that guy Dreadward Arcanist. Dreadward. I mean, it, yeah. it, it works in constructed because it you have the critical mass. Yeah, but it doesn't really work in limited. And limited, it's just not even the good pay the good payoffs are not good enough. They they don't stand up against the other good payoffs of the other colors and. Like it's it it is weird to me how bad blue red continues to be over and over again, dude. And let me tell you, when it comes to standard right now, there are so many things that are just threatening. Like, I mean, <sighs> when you're just like, okay, my opponent has six mana up, are are they just gonna like play a spree here? Right. And like, I'm like guessing what color. Like, okay, if you're in white, the white ones do this, the the green ones do this. <laughs> like, like what can I attack into right now and not die? Like, yeah. And, and well, and also, how many ways like, terror the yeah. peaks and some monster and you're dead? Right. Like, I mean, that's literally just it. <laughs> There's <laughs> also eight million ways to get double strike and to pump. Yep. And yeah, it's a you can get blowed out in this format for sure. But like, usually the games take a little bit longer because the ways to give double strike are expensive. But well, still, except well, well, so you got that two mana two two when you make a crime against double strike, right? That right. Like, that guy. Mm -hmm. So then you will play beat that the crap two. out of you. You play the lasso on three, which automatically equips, mm. which taps down their blocker and gives them double strikes to you for six. Dude, I had the nut. That's draw. a good one. I had two journey to nowheres and like three mystical tethers. That's all it took. It was double striker and a bunch of removal based on enchantments and things. And I just I wrecked them every time. So that deck was sick. Um, but yeah, overall. Uh, I'm enjoying it. I'm in like I was describing this for you know for me the first part of any set is the limited part portion because I want to get as many cards as I can with as many gems and gold as I have and then with all my remaining mythic you know or all my remaining wild cards go fill in the rest of the decks. Also give it just a little bit of time for some of the cards to shake out so I don't like burn mythics or whatever that I don't need to because there's so many mythics in this set. Um, but yeah, but even cards like uh, the Jitte, the new like the Lost Jitte. Yeah, that card is strong. That card is very good. Turn one, that card, I, it won me games, man. You can't keep up with it if you get going. It's it's very good. So, uh, overall, I think the card or I think that the set is great. And again, the the sales themselves are great. Like the the you know the box the the box value you know the average if you just open it and sell it or whatever still looks to be above MSRP or whatever going prices is these days. I think um, I think what helps the set though is there's literally cards for every format in the set. Mm -hmm. Like that's rare that you have that happen, but it feels like there's something you're seeing people speculating on or trying to build with almost across the board or trying to find ways to include into their decks for one reason or another. So that, that's going to help the set in the long run for sure. There you go. Also, so. the best thing that you can buy for this set on Arena is the phrases bundle have you seen the phrases oh yeah you can be pondering but it should be an, an apostrophe i was a little sad that it was pondering pondering <laughs> yeah. you can get yeah. howdy yeehaw three two one draw what in tarnation and pondering i just okay. heard of the how people are trolling with those and i kind of hate it what you know. do is you set a stop on their draw step and then you you know emote three two one draw and then you take off the stop to let them that's really cool. I like that. I'm not though. even mad that's at that. Awesome. That's kind of funny, actually. That's hilarious. I mean, like, it would be annoying, about. but also kind of funny. It's funny <laughs> once. They it's do it to you like two or three funny times. Once. Yeah. yeah. Sure. Funny All right. right. Uh, let's move on here to uh, there's going to be a Pro Tour next week, which yep. is awesome. Pro Tour uh, Outlaws of Thunder Junction is coming. They have the broadcast team here with uh, Riley Knight's going to be in, which is great. Uh, Marshall Sutcliffe. Uh, Manny, Manu, Manny uh, Davuti, uh, Davuti Corey, yeah. Yeah, Corey Baumeister, Cedric Phillips, uh, Maria uh, Allied, uh, or Ally, uh, Ally rather, I, um, Ailey. 
Ailey? Ailey, thank mm-hmm. you. Um, yeah, Ailey is, is great. <clears throat> so yeah, fantastic team. Should be a heck of a good time. And as we mentioned, this is the largest standard. Is it a standard event? Now I got to ask yep. myself. It's a standard event. So yep. it's the largest standard we've ever had or we've had in a bajillion years. It's going to be awesome. The new set is juiced to the max. I think something's going to come out of this this you know tournament one way or the other. Yeah, it's going to be interesting to see how many teams try to play it safe with like, we know this is good. Let's just add a couple of cards versus people that go, okay, what is the craziest thing we could do with this set? Can we make that work? I think that's going to be like the two camps of testing that are going to go down. And you really, by the time the event gets here, well, really, they have to submit their decks, I think, at the end of this week. So they're really only going to have about two weeks to mess around with it and figure it out. So huh. this is going to be pretty interesting to see which way people go. Yeah. Wild, wild that this is, this is, is which Pro Tour is this? I think Outlaws? This is the, yes. Yeah, this is the Outlaws. Pro Tour Outlaws. Okay. Yeah, yeah. All right. PT they, they Thunder, haven't listed as they're calling it. PT Thunder. They've got a, yep. they've got it listed weirdly in a couple places. It didn't seem like that they figured out how to well, uh, brand their own uh, brand their own events. And PG places. Thunder is like the hashtag they decided to go with for the set, not MTGOTJ, like they usually do the set code, right? Um, Which is PT fine. PT Thunder. Yeah, exactly. Yep. So uh, but, it's like PK know. Thunder from uh, what was that game? PK I Thunder. I was thinking WCW because they used to have Thunder that came out on like Thursdays or whatever. <laughs> That's wild. <laughs> Somebody tell me nerds. Yep. Ness. The the character is Ness, and he had a baseball bat, and he would use the PK Thunder ability. I used to play a lot of Smash Bros, and that was the oh, gotcha. character. Nice. Thank uh, you. Uh, actually, if I could make an appeal, somebody from Wizards is listening to this or watching this, depending. God bless you. Get some of us content creators that live in the area to the Seattle events so that we can produce content for the masses from the floor and give people an inside look that won't be seen otherwise for this otherwise just like cutoff pro tour. It would be really cool and we'd be really cheap. And we're in the area. I can be there. Mm-hmm. Pick me and like four other people. We can get it done. I promise. I mean, all right, there you go. Yeah. I mean, <laughs> you know, you want to be able to do things. Uh, they want to get it in under budget as you always want to. You're able to like, look, just give me a, you know, just a few little crumbs. Get yeah. Me give there. me some gas money and feed me, me for the food. weekend. That's yeah. it. Give right. Me some sandwiches. Give me some sandwiches. I'll make you some content. You know what I'm saying? Dude, I am. Li- I could get in my car right now and be at that convention center in 30 minutes. <laughs> like, seriously, like, Come on now. You know, uh, there are things you can do uh, to try to get in there, but the best you can do an ask is an ask, brother. Um, all right, let's move on here to some desperate ravings. This was an interesting little thing that popped up, uh, was that Mark Rosewater noted uh, on his blog talk uh, that the legend rule is not something he's a huge fan of, uh, huh. which I thought was interesting. Uh, he said, you know, I'd like to keep legendary as a super type. I just wouldn't have it have any rules baggage, especially only negative rules baggage, which we've got. Oh, that's interesting. Yeah. Some of that stuff like mana burn, for example, was just yeah. straight negative. Nothing really good about it. Uh, the reason we can't make the change and they tried is that they've used the rule too much over the years as a development tool. And right. there's cards that yeah. say legend rule and th- disregard legend rule and so on. And so I get it. But, you know, this to me sounds a lot like, you know, if only every spell could be a sorcery and you can give the sorceries flash. Instead of having instance yeah. sorceries be something that's different, right? I mean, this wasn't really news. This feels like somebody just, I mean, like anybody who talked to Rosewater before kind of knew how he felt about it. Like, yeah. right. Yeah. Like, I think it makes sense. I, I mean, I'm not married to the idea of having legendary permanents. Uh, I think that it is an interesting design restriction, and I think that it is an interesting yeah. deck building restriction and gameplay. Uh, thing to have some purely negative text. You can make things more powerful when you can only have one of them in it's, play at a time. So it also feels weird to when you do have like multiple copies of a card out. It's just like if it's a named, it's a character. Like okay, it makes sense that there's only one. Like yeah. it's it's not that big deal. You know, and and if you put your old magic uh old magic man hat on, you know, you have the legend rule as it originally existed. Where you play yeah. one and they could not play a copy. If yeah, now right. that, was, that was stupid. That was yeah. the Lynn Civy yeah. awfulness era. Right. And then yeah. it became if they were both in play, they both died. And then it became yep. you both could have one. And but if you played a second one, one would have to die. And then later, like with planeswalkers, you could only have one Jace. 
But then this is a very similar to legend rule, you know, and then you get also, more am I not mistaken? Is this the longest the legend rule has been the way that it is? I think so. I feel like it is. And that might be a good enough reason to leave it alone. Like it's worked this long and everybody's had a good time with it. And since then we've made commander and blah, blah and whatever. So it's just like, like, yeah, I think we're good just leaving it at this point. There was a point in time in which you, at which baby Jace, Jace Bellower, the OG Jace, uh, yep. was a seal of Jace uh -huh. for their Jace the Mind Sculptor. For their Jace the Mind Sculptor. If they yep. play Jace the Mind Sculptor, both would die due yep. to that weird legend rule yep. thing. You played extra Jaces in your board just to just eliminate that. somebody else's Jace. Yep. Which is, so yours. that you could preempt it. You could play yep. it. You could have it in play turn three, yep. and then your opponent on the play couldn't play their uh, Mind Sculptor. That's right. Yeah. Yeah. So things were weird, you know, there for a minute. Um, and they've changed over the years a variety of times. And maybe this was just chosen as a cool topic. And maybe we just talk about it that way. That's okay. Yeah. Um, it's fine. It was fun. Uh, like all it. right. Let's uh, let's see here. I don't think we have a lot of other options. A bit hey, of man. a slow week. When the release Short week, week comes, it's fine. It's just like, go play with the new set. It's good. Yeah. I can tell you verifiably it is a, a wonderful time. Uh, to play if you're a magic player. Uh, really and I actually have a question for Power Dragon because oh, I I want to give you an opportunity to talk about uh, this because you were passionate and then cut yourself off in the in the second there about making content for Pro Tours hmm. um, yeah. w when the public can't be there. As someone who sent myself to the Pro Tour to cover it, when it wasn't open to the public, I flew to Montreal. I got my passport updated. I went up there to prove that we need coverage of these events for people to care. Uh, what is the sales pitch beyond we just need people taking photos? We just need people in the room. What is it about having specifically members of the community from the city that you're in that excites you about having a sort of uh, guerrilla coverage kind of setup situation? You know, I think it's something that they kind of could use it all of the pro tours, but this one in particular makes the most sense because there's no other access to it. Mm -hmm. Right. This is kind of the only way to do it. And I feel like they're like we, we've kind of in this space of we know that competitive play and pro tour play still needs to exist or whatever. But one of the things you're missing is how do you make that matter to more players? Right. And part of that is let the people who make the content come in and expose it in a way that their audiences consume it, yeah. right? That's something wizards can't do, right? I speak to my audience a certain way. You'll speak to your audience a certain way. You know, who knows, CGB or whoever, like they're all going to speak to their audience a very different way and give them a chance to go like, hey, maybe my audience just wants funny jokes or wants to hear like how people are getting through the week or what it's like to play in an event with no audience or whatever. Right. So I would do those types of things. Mm -hmm. Maybe somebody does some fun stuff that they do a bunch of meme content. So they'll just come in and have, tell the creators jokes and see if they can answer them. Maybe somebody's doing trivia stuff with, if you're like heuristic studies or something or whatever, right. Going deep in the knowledge part of it, right. All of those could be ways to build the character and the personalities of some of these people on the tour or even the event itself. Mm. by getting that exposure to these other audiences in a way that Wizards just isn't going to be able to do. Not because they don't have the power or whatever. It's just we all reach different audiences in different ways, and we're not doing that. So now you have an opportunity where you can do it where it's cheap, and it makes the most sense. So if you're going to test it, this is the one. Like, I would argue that w Wizards just does not seem very interested in a lot of star building and a lot of personality building. And, you know... Uh, and I think that's very important personally. And I think what you saw at the SCG tour back in the day was, you know, a way to show that, Hey, you know, these very small time, small fries, people were getting like very well noticed and you knew right. their name and you knew what was going on with them because you'd heard about them and you right. got covered and interviewed and shown, uh, in a lot of feature matches and, you know, feature presentations and people who were, who were competitive and popular and successful on the SCG tour were bigger celebrities who wanted to have more uh, who got more clicks right. than people who did well on the pro tour. Right. Like you were getting more clicks and I'm not going to, I'm not going to dagger anybody in particular, but it is a simple fact that there are pro tour hall of famers who are at the top of their, uh, who at the time they were playing were at the top of their games who were nowhere near as popular as full-time writers for star city mm -hmm. who won an SCG open every once in a while. Sure. So the star building does demonstrably help. It helps leagues like 
PGA Tour and UFC, the two that I com- most compare to to Magic. Um, right. The other question I would ask, Power Dragon, is, is it enough to simply report on the event or do you need to do stuff like what Evan used to do, what I used to do, which is f- follow the teams around, do interviews that are separate from the event, uh, sort of build oh, sure. that but, way, or is that's recording? Be, yeah, Sorry. I think that's good, but it will be up to the individual creators, right? If that aligns with the type of content you do or your audience, then for sure do it, right? Everybody's going to have a different approach, but let them just do their thing, Right. And again, it's even just about building up the players, which I think it'll be good for that. But like just the event itself and creating the exposure for the event and getting eyeballs on it and making it matter to people who may not be competitive players, but they can possibly find things in it that are interesting. Because there's a lot of aspects to it other than just here's a pile of money they're playing for. Right. And, And as we have known throughout the years for a variety of ways, uh, Wizards has often done some star building around players and gotten burned by it. And some sure. of them were cheaters. That's true, too. Some of them were yeah. bags, and they just didn't work out. And, you know, and with, see, we assume the liability for that if you do it, because it's on our channels, not yours. See? <laughs> right? You know, and it, you know, so it can cut both ways. Um, mm-hmm. But ultimately, I think it would be a positive overall, and uh, they should give you that access. That'd be great. I think so, too. And I already have a list of people who are in Western Washington that can get there. So, you know. There it is. The spreadsheet, the spreadsheet is there, ready to go. Yeah. Like, hell, I have a whole Discord. You can come have conversations with people. See? Like, there you go. <laughs> All right. We're going to turn the corner here to the finisher. Now, spoiler alert, loot the key to everything was the treasure at the end of the heist for OTJ, or the big score, if you will. So tell me, what's the MacGuffin you're hoping is the brass ring in the next set, Ruben? Well, I'm told that the first set of 2025 is going to be in a racing world. And everyone knows that the big prize for winning any drag race is there's only one thing that it could be. There's only one thing that could be at the end of the greatest quarter mile in the multiverse, because as always, the true prize is family. It's about family. Of course Uh, it is. (laughs) I I don't got friends. I got family. Power Dragon. Right, in Duskmorn, we obviously have scary movies and ghost stories. So, assuming I don't die in the first three minutes of the set being released, (laughs) I'm looking forward to peeking under the bed or in the closet and finding the true reward for the horror story. Getting a franchise and surviving to all the sequels, of course. (laughs) (laughs) Fingers crossed. Hey, I'm just saying, the black guy, you either die in the first three minutes. I got to say, the ad lib, that was a great ad lib. That was was funnier than the joke I wrote. You die in the beginning or you make it all the way to the fifth movie. True. That's just kind of how it goes. That's right. Yep, yep, yep. That's one of those where I don't think Ruben was comfortable writing it, but it's amazing that you put it in there. Incredible. It's true, though. (laughs) And we all know it's true, which is why it's funny. Now, look, Bloomborough is coming, y'all, and with it, there are going to be plushies, squishies, and stuffies of all shapes and sizes. So I'm looking forward to the big reward at the end of the rainbow being Fox Jason, presumably Snake Frasca, discovering the greatest prize in the cute, fuzzy animal world, a corporate partnership with Build-A-Bear. That would be sick. Come on. <laughs> yeah. You can go make your own Jace. Go make your own yeah. Jace. That'd be so Fox sick. Jace? I yeah, have yeah. your own Otter Ralzeric or Fox Jace or oh, Snake Frasca gross. or yeah. Loot Loot. I guess Loot doesn't change. Loot's just looting. It's fine. Yeah, he just looks like he does. I guess. Or Loot becomes an actual child, like it's backwards for him. Oh, that would be creepy. That'd be oh, hilarious. Uh, <laughs> yeah, that'd be terrifying. A little terrifying. Yeah. But that ends another live episode of Magic Minds. Thanks for joining us here to discuss all things magic. Thank you, Power Dragon. Hey, as always, good to be here. Don't forget to use the code and catch me online playing a bunch of Thunder Junction because I'll be doing that all weekend. So much fun. Thank you, Ruben. Hey, thank you. This was great. Yeah, we're going to move on here to our final slide. I want to thank our sponsor, CoolStuffInc.com, our co-sponsor, Mana Traders, uh, and Cool Stuff Inc. Uh, promo code Magic Mics. Go ahead and use that. My co-host, Power Dragon, Ruben Bressler. You guys for watching and listening. I hope you support us at Patreon.com slash Magic Mics. Please follow, like, tweet, favorite, share, subscribe to everything social that tells people we exist. Catch us on our exclusive member Discord live on Twitch.tv at Magic Mics, live or taped on our YouTube channel. Follow us on Twitter at Magic Mics Cast and join our TikTok at Magic Mics Cast or join us here next week, same time, same place, for another episode of Magic Mics. Good night, everybody. <laughs>